morning, good afternoon, good evening, my brother, my sister. Shalom where you are. It's Pastor DMS. I'm coming to you with a special series that is called The Most Effective Disciples of Jesus Christ. We know that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us the biggest commandment that he gave us, the Great Commission, which you'll find in the book of Matthew 28. He says, power and uh, authority I've given you, but go ye throughout all the world and make all people my disciples. The Lord has called us, to stand us to make disciples of all nations. And then if you take that word disciples, there is a word inside it that is called discipline. In other words, we call people to the kingdom. Come to receive Jesus Christ, but it is our responsibility to make them disciples of Jesus Christ. A disciple is someone that is really sold out to his master and then he follows and uh, he does what the master wants him to do. He represents the master. He embodies the values of that master. He becomes his disciple. In other words, if you see him, you will say, no, these people have been with Jesus Christ. It's like when a very great council, they heard Peter and John speaking, they said, surely, these people have been with Jesus Christ. So that's what we want to do. And in our ministry, we got a series that we call The Seven Habits of Most Effective Disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ as a custom, he had habit, he has built up those kind of able to help him to function properly. And you see also when the Bible in the book of Acts speaks about Peter and John. He says, as it was their custom, at 3 p.m., they went to the temple to pray. That means they build up habits of praying at 3 p.m. That's how we said now that we as believers of Jesus Christ, as human beings in general, we are creatures of habit. We have to create those habits. The people that succeed are the people that have created habit that helps them to succeed. They don't, we don't have to make a decision all the time about things we do. We build those habits into our behavior so that it becomes easier for us to act a certain way. And that's what we want to tell the disciples of Jesus Christ and teach them in our ministry so that they build those, those habits into their life. Those habits we have mentioned and said we call them seven habits, seven habits of most effective disciples of Jesus Christ. I'm going to give them to you now. The first one is the habit of prayer. The second one is a habit of fasting. The third one is a habit of meditating on the Word of God. And the fourth one, a habit of witnessing, of being a witness of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the fifth one, is the habit of fellowshipping together. Amen. So that you get together and fellowship. And the sixth one is a habit of giving. In fact, we could have started with the habit of giving before even then. And the last one that we want to teach is to embody in our behavior the fact that we have to grow. Do a little more all the time. Amen. Let's start today with the first habit of fat. Uh, prayer. We want to teach that habit, not that it become a must. We don't want to bring people to say, I have to pray. You don't have to pray. It's for freedom that Christ has set you free. But you want to be in fellowship with him. I don't have to speak to my wife. I just speak to my wife because I'm in an intimate relationship with her. She's my wife. That's what you want to build those habits so that uh, you give value to a relationship that you got with the Lord. And the first habit we say is uh, prayer. When we teach about prayer, we exactly take the verse that uh, Paul spoke to Timothy. He said, pray at all time with all kind of prayer. We'll have to cultivate that as a habit of being in dialogue, on being in fellowship, being in relationship with the Lord at all time. Amen. 
But there will be a time where that we seclude ourselves, we set apart ourselves so that we want to give it almost like more values or more meaning. But at every single time, we want to engage and be in relationship with the Lord to make prayer a habit. And then also we teach about the Lord prayer so that not as a things that you like to recite all the time, but just to take that as a model so that it almost that guides you into how you pray. Number one, we said pray at all time with all kind of prayer. Make it a habit. Make it a sort of like a lifestyle. Number two, sometimes you have to set yourself apart so that you give more meaning or you give more values so that you don't want to dis be disturbed, so that, you know, it becomes sort of a focus point onto your prayer life. It's like when somebody does a marathon, he set up a pace where he goes, but there will be time where he wants to accelerate so that he achieves something and he will come back to the same set motion that he has put together. So those are the time we're not teaching them that, you know, you have to work up at this time and pray, but it's just both is a habit. Also, you better have habit, like in the morning or before you go to sleep. I've seen people, and myself included, that you build a habit of brushing your teeth. You don't say, no, I'm going to brush my teeth during midday. You know, wake up in the morning, then you brush your teeth. And sometimes we have set up the prayer as I wake up in the morning before I start my time, I start my day, I put up time of intense sort of like communication with my Lord. And then before I go to bed, when my mind will be set, I trust, I want also to spend time with the Lord. Whatever your time is, but as long as you set time with the your Lord and pray. When we taught you as well and we're teaching the people that are hearing us for the first time now and again, that use a model, you know, like many people use the so-called the Lord's Prayer. You start by giving praise. You start by being thankful. You start by being grateful. I'll enter your presence with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter your what with praise. And then after that, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Allah will be, be your name. Lift him up. You know, be grateful. Lift the Lord up in Jesus' mighty name. You praise, you worship him, which is very important. And what we teach as well is also to look, leave yourself in the direction of the Holy Spirit who will start revealing to you. So spend more time also listening to the Lord, not just talking, talking. And then being led by the Holy Spirit in your inner man, voice, or conviction, or oh, brings an idea to you, bringing the verse to you, and then you will have time for requests as well. The only reason you do not receive, the Lord says, is because you do not ask. Ask, and it will be given to you. Knock, and the door will be open, and then search, and you will find. Okay, that request also it's got a place into your prayer time. And then after that, you know, sometimes you profess your faith, faith, you affirm your faith, you take authority, and then, like it says, they had victory in the book of Revelation because of the blood of the Lamb of God and the truth of the testimony. You speak those truths loud so that you yourself convince. You command situation to come. You speak to your mountain. If you say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thy cast out, it will be done to you if you do it in faith. There is a place where you command, you take authority, you stand against the evil one, and then you speak to those mountains. You speak to sickness and disease in the body. You minister the healing power of God into the life and if you see any demonic activity you come against it you stomp you know and then that's all prayer the aim of this element that you're doing is not to teach everything about prayer is that to say to you that we teach as a first habit of most effective disciples of jesus christ is prayer 